Stan Jabalisco here. Uh, in the previous video I talked about uh, grounded grid triode radio frequency power amplifier RF PA radio frequency power amplifier. Triode means a vacuum tube that has three elements known as the cathode, the grid, and the plate or anode. Well the grid is commonly called the control grid because it is essential to controlling the flow of electrons through the device. Well, <clears throat> I talked about how triode vacuum tubes can be somewhat unstable, meaning they can break into a self-oscillation or parasitic oscillation situation, uh, particularly in the grounded cathode arrangement. Uh, in the grounded grid arrangement, that is less likely to occur, but it still can. Now, there are methods to minimize the risk of parasitic oscillation. One of these methods is called neutralization. In which a certain amount of negative feedback is deliberately introduced from the plate circuit or output to the grid cathode circuit or input negative feedback which tends to reduce the gain of the amplifier just a little bit but it also greatly minimizes the risk of parasitics taking place but there are other ways to mitigate the risk of parasitic oscillation besides neutralization. One of the more common methods is to use a tetrode, meaning a four element vacuum tube, or a pentode. meaning a five element vacuum tube. Now, a tetrode has two grids, a control grid, and then also something called a screen grid, or just screen. That increases the uh, isolation between the control grid and the plate by providing an extra element what usually is done with the screen grid is a resistor is connected to the positive high voltage supply so that it gets a voltage that is positive but not as positive as the high voltage applied to the plate. Not as large a voltage. Oftentimes the screen grid will also have a capacitor, so-called bypass capacitor that goes to ground to increase still more the isolation between the control grid and the plate. Now when you have a tube like that with a screen grid, sometimes you get electrons bombarding that plate with such velocity that some of them bounce back off the plate rather than going in and towards the positive high voltage providing uh, impetus for the output signal. Sometimes a few of those electrons will bounce back and that actually tends to create a so-called back current. These are known as secondary electrons and the uh, emission of those secondary electrons can be blocked to some extent by using a third grid called the suppressor grid. Now you have three grids and a plate and a cathode for a total of five elements giving you a so-called pentode tube. The suppressor grid repels those secondary electrons back to the plate. In other words, they're trying to get away and it captures or it it drives them back, drives them into retreat.
and back out to ensure that the amplifier has as much gain as possible. The tetrode and the pentode are commonly used in uh, radio frequency power amplifiers because they tend to be somewhat more stable, that is they're less likely to break into parasitic oscillation than the triode is. All that said, uh, nevertheless triodes still find some use. I believe that the venerable old 813 tube is a pentode tube. Now you can operate a pentode or a tetrode as a triode by just not connecting the screen or suppressor grid to anything. Uh, there is yet another uh, method of operation of some of these vacuum tubes. I believe the 3-500Z and maybe also the 813. A lot of uh, power amplifier tubes seemed to incorporate this arrangement known as a directly heated cathode. And just uh, in order to provide a little extra detail, I've enlarged the tube. A lot of vacuum tubes have, well, oftentimes they just don't show the filament at all. There's the filament right there, which heats up because it's supplied with, oh, suppose something like 12 volts AC. It doesn't have to be DC because the only purpose of this thing is to heat up this indirectly heated cathode. But once in a while, you will want to use the filament as the actual cathode. The tube won't really even have a separate cathode. It only has this filament. In a case like that, you need to provide the filament with direct current, otherwise you're going to get horrific AC modulation of the signal, and you certainly don't want that. The symbol for a directly heated cathode tube, triode tube in this case, looks like that. The control grid here, the plate here, and this is the directly heated cathode. So what you do then is you provide this 12 volts DC through a couple of very hefty choke coils to keep the radio frequency energy which is applied at the cathode oftentimes in a cathode in a grounded grid arrangement the RF input is applied to the cathode and it's actually applied right to the filament of the tube uh, you might uh, also want to have either a transformer or an isolating blocking capacitor there so that DC doesn't get into the driver of the previous stage or whatever that stage might be. These are heavy duty radio frequency chokes and then you have 12 or whatever volts DC to heat this filament up. That uh, the directly heated cathode gets of course a lot hotter than an indirectly heated cathode because the filament itself is actually the element that does the does the electron emitting. Imagine if you were to place your steak or your pork chop right on the burner of your electric stove rather than putting it in a pan. Well you'd be electric uh, uh, indirectly frying or indirectly heated cooking utensil in the case of a frying pan, but a directly heated uh, heating utensil in the case of putting your steak right on the right on the burner. Don't do that, by the way. The grease will drip down in there and make a real conundrum for you. But a barbecue grill, perfectly all right to do it like that, but then you're not really placing your meat right on the burner. If you, if you place your meat right on the burner, you're going to scorch that meat because that burner is awful hot. But in the case of a vacuum tube, it just means it's a really good emitter of electrons. Uh, so that is uh, just a few variants on the um, radio frequency power amplifier theme.
I hope to make some more videos on these topics, including such things as push-pull, class AB versus class C, uh, parallel connected tubes and things like that. Um, but for now, I will simply sign off, letting you know that I am an amateur radio operator with the call sign W1GV Whiskey. One good vibrations. Till next time. So long.